Announcements. Please remain seated until dismissed by the ushers so everyone can leave in an orderly fashion and maintain a distance of six feet from one another to stay safe. Thank you for your patience with our volunteers. For your convenience and safety, we encourage you to give your tithing online, holynameusa.org. Thank you. Please fill out our church census in the bulletin or call the parish office to update your information so we can stay connected. Also, the United States Census 2020 is going on now too. Please look in the bulletin. Thank you. The gift shop is selling sanitizing UV lights, face masks, and other supplies. Look in the bulletin and call the parish office to open up the store. Thank you. We want to thank Sandra and Ruben Guerra for building the outdoor altar, Mary Garza for donating hand sanitizers, Raymond and Rebecca for their sanitation ministry, all our volunteers and our Holy Name parishioners for their offertory tithings for Holy Name Catholic Church in these difficult times. Thank you. For more information on parish events, please read the bulletin or check our marquee announcement. Good evening. Welcome to Holy Name Catholic Church. Please turn off all cell phones and electronic devices. At this time, we welcome all visitors that are joining us in our celebration. You're always welcomed here and hope you will come back again soon. Please follow the ushers' directions for communion. Maintain a distance of six feet apart from each other and family can stay together. There will be hand sanitizer given to you by our volunteers in the line if you do not have any. Wear your mask receiving communion, only, lifting it or li only removing it or lifting the mask up to consume Jesus away from the priest or deacon. After communion, please do not drive off. Please be patient, wait for final blessing and for traffic control. Volunteers to safely guide you out of parking lot. Thank you. It is a great pleasure in the middle of these languorous summer months to sit back and listen to stories. The crowds in the gospel were able to do just that for Jesus taught them about telling parables. Parables made his lessons about the kingdom of heaven memorable in ways in which straightforward narration would fail. Now it is our turn to listen. Let us savor them, ruminating on their rich images and considering their meaning in our lives. Second collection is for parish maintenance. This evening's mass is for Camilo M. Martinez, Didri Almaguer, Jose L. Robleo and Terry Quintero. Please rise. And join us in singing number 560. Oh, bless the Lord. Number 560. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, rock of strength and of Oh, bless the Lord, the God of every nation, over all the earth. Oh, bless the Lord, highest heavens above, bless the Lord, glorify his name. Sun in the day, moon and stars in the night, worship and praise. Oh, bless the Lord.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we ask the Lord to forgive our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May God Almighty have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope faith and charity they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands to our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit 
one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, whose care is for all men, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when men doubt the completeness of your power and rebuke any insolence among those who know it. You who are sovereign in strength judge with mildness and with great forbearance you govern us. For you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous man must be kind and you have filled your sons with good hope because you give repentance for sins the word of the lord himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. 
and the one who searches hearts knows what the intentions of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who has sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through through the wheat and then went off. When the crowd when the crop grew and bore, uh, bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did we not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. And his slaves said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? And he replied, no. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then, the har then at har harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them into bundles for burning, and gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, and yet well grown in its largest of plants, and it becomes a large bush. And the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. At all these things, Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said to the prophets. I will open my mouth in parables and I will announce what has lain hidden from the, from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowd, he went into the house and his disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parables of the weeds in the field. And he said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of, of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever hear, has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. What a way to start a comeback, huh? Been gone two weeks and I mess up already. The parable of the mustard seed, as Jesus had said, Behold the mustard seed, it is the smallest of the seeds, yet it grows into a large bush. 
I want to begin this article with something that you do quite often, but might take for granted, and that's reading. We all pick up a newspaper, a magazine, a novel, or whatever, in a few moments we brought into a world beyond our immediate surroundings. We can learn new things. We can develop our own intelligence. We can disagree, or we can agree with someone we have never met and never will meet. We can be transported into the world of imagination, all due to our ability to read. Now, how did this start? How did we learn to read? We started, most of us, with little blocks and individual letters. We learned what sounds these letters represented. Then we put the letters together and learned how to spell words. We even learned new words. We put the words together and learned new concepts and reinforced that which we had learned in very small steps. We went from the letters on the blocks to being able to read the philosophy of St. Thomas Aquinas. It all began in a small way. It began with letters. You see, the kingdom of God is like a child learning his or her letters. Time goes on, and mom and dad and teachers work with the child. And the child's ability to read grows so great that the child becomes a professor of English literature. And so it is with the kingdom of God. Great-grandma and great-grandpa taught their children their prayers. They brought their children to church and taught them with their lives to value their relationship with the Lord. And their children became parents and did the same. And their children are the moms and dads of our parish. The church is full of good Christian men and women, people of all walks of life even priests, all living the values of the kingdom of God, the spiritual realities of life. And now you are doing the same. You are teaching the ABCs of religion to your children. You have faith that the kingdom of God will spread through them. So do not wonder if anything is getting through to your children. Do not allow yourself to think that maybe nothing is happening for your children. Trust in God. If a child who learns his letters can become a professor of English literature, a child who learns the simple, simplest lessons of faith can become a great force of love for the kingdom of God. Say prayers with your children. Allow God to turn the tiny mustard seed into a great plant. The parable of the weeds and the wheat. And as Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like the farmer who sowed wheat. Then an enemy came and sowed weeds. The weeds and the wheat grew together. Let us get rid of the weeds, said his workers, when the weeds and the wheat we're still tiny plants. Better not, said the farmer. You might lose some of the wheat too. We will wait until they are ready for harvesting when we're sure we know what is weed and what is wheat. Then, and only then, we'll get rid of the weeds. The kingdom of heaven is like the school where we send our treasures, our children, they are not finished products when they get there. They have to do a lot of growing. They are still our treasures, and we love them all. Perhaps in the school there are other children who may not have experienced basic human values. Perhaps they have been raised in a violent household, or households torn apart by some form of chemical dependency. Perhaps they have witnessed people hurting others, taking what is not theirs, using bad language, 
doing terrible things. As a result, these children may have some pretty rough edges. Should the principal of the school throw the children from dysfunctional homes out before they cause serious problems? Or should they give them the opportunity to learn basic values from the school and even from their classmates? Yes, children need to be removed from the mainstream if they do something that threatens the welfare of the other children but they are not going to be removed if they have not offended gravely because the plants are still young. And there may be wheat where we think there is weed. The kingdom of, the kingdom of heaven is like the life of every man and every woman. There is that in each of us which is wheat. There is that which is weed. Should God destroy us because of the weed in us? Or should he give us time? Perhaps that which is weed in us can be overtaken by that which is wheat. A stronger prayer life goes a long way in preventing serious sin. The divine father isn't ready to give up on the crop. We should not give up on ourselves. God knows that what may appear to be wheat is in reality weed. For example, a man has a drinking problem. His drinking is destroying himself and his family. Through prayer and the determination to change his life and through his own openness to the grace of God, he goes for help. He, become, he first becomes a member of AA. Then, he is active in helping others. And now, for the last 15 years, he is dry. He is still an alcoholic, but his condition has resulted in virtue overcoming vice. Now, he, help, uh, he helps others. God did not give up on him. He did not give up on himself. What looked like weed, the disease of alcohol, alcoholism, turned out to be wheat as he brings God's healings to other alcoholics. The parable of the mustard seed. The little efforts we make for the kingdom of God have a tremendous impact on the world and on our neighbors and our loved ones. The parable of the weeds and wheat. God has infinite patience. He is not about to give up on you or his people. And we should not give up on ourselves and or others. The parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the weeds and the wheat. Two very simple parables. Two simple stories. Two tremendous sources of encouragement for each and every one of us. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Called to be people of faith and love, we turn to the Father of love with our prayers. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may re reveal God's mercy in the way that we come to the assistance of those whom society chooses to overlook, the hungry, the homeless, the imprisoned, the refugee. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders, that God's goodness and mercy may be a model for them as they exercise their responsibilities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are accused of criminal behavior, that they may be judged with clemency and allow repentance for their transgressions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in the heat of summer, especially the elderly, young children, and those who have difficult medical conditions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may find comfort in God's extravagant mercy when we repent of our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as missionary disciples, we may be willing to respond to this year's Archbishop's appeal with open hearts, to accompany with joy, give with grace, to help continue ministries needed to evangelize our faith and help those in need let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And may God's divine mercy be on all persons who have passed away, especially our loved ones, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness and grace, you are with us always. Hear our petitions based in your divine providence through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the offertory. Our song for the presentation and preparation of the gifts is number 575. Worthy is the Lamb, number 575. Sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy 
as you bless the gifts of evil, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by His birth He brought renewal to humanity's fallen estate, and by His suffering canceled out our sins. By His rising from the dead, He has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, He has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Archbishop, Michael, our auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Camilo, Camilo Martinez, Deidre Almaguer, Jose Robredo, and Terry Quintero, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, with Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Behold, brethren, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to his supper. communion song is number 345 spirit and grace number 345 
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. This Mass is ended. Let us go and preach the love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God. And please join us in singing number 500, anthem number 500. Peaceful people who was loved. 